Exercise 13b. In this exercise, uh, we actually continue on and proceed to put the thread on the neck of the bottle, as well as put the neck on the bottle, and at the same time, we're going to correct the fillet that we ran into uh, where we had a problem. On the, uh, the exercise 14, uh, 13a. So let's take a look here. With the bottle open, what we want to do is we want to fix this to where the fillet goes all the way around. One of the options we could have done is just simply selected it in the feature tree with the right mouse click and just hit delete. And it will regenerate it. Now it might actually be easier to just simply put the round in later, like now. Okay. So the, what we want to do next is put the neck of the bottle in and then put a thread on it. So let's um, start a sketch. We'll sketch on top of the surface here. And then for references here, just make sure that you have your planes turned on and select your front and uh, right planes as reference geometry for your sketch. And that's where we'll locate the center for the neck of the bottle. So take the circle tool and draw out a circle. And in my case, I'm going to make sure it's a point 0.625 diameter. And then I'm going to hit done and extrude it. And I just want to extrude it approximately three quarters of an inch. The next thing we want to do is actually put a thread on this. Now to thread this, the neck of the bottle, what we want to do is we could go ahead Okay, before we put the thread on actually, let's step back for a second and take a look at the shelling capabilities inside Pro Engineer. If you want to shell this bottle out right now, you could go, and it's probably not a bad idea to try shelling it before you put a thread on because the complexity of the thread makes it very difficult for it to be shelled out. So you're actually better off putting the thread on first, and, or put the shelling it first and then putting the thread on afterwards. So let's look here. Over on the right hand side we can see the shell tool. Go to shell. Now the thickness for the whole bottle will make that 0.05, so 50 thousandths. If we go to references here you'll see remove surfaces. Click in that box and just select the top surface of the neck of the bottle. Now, in the preview, we could actually see the 50 thousandths thickness all around the bottle profile. Looks like it's going to work well. If yours isn't working or not showing a preview, that was an indication that maybe some of the geometry you have is a little too complex for the thickness that you're trying to put in. In that case, uh, maybe for this exercise, try and make it maybe 10 thousandths of an inch, so 0 0.01 or something like that, and perhaps it might work. Um, shelling is not an exact science every time. Anyhow. One other thing I'd like to show you is a multi-thickness shell. Imagine we have a bottle here. The overall geometry of the bottle could be 50 thousandths thick, um, which is fine. It gives it that squeezable capability, like uh, so you could squeeze out a shampoo bottle or whatever. However, maybe around the neck of the bottle where a cap gets tightened on, it might need to be thicker so it doesn't collapse easily or break. So what we have here is non-default thickness. Non-default thickness, if you click in here, allows you to select, in this case, the surface of the neck. And as soon as that's clicked on, you see there's a dimension that appears here. And you can plug in a different dimension. In this case, maybe I want it to be 100 thousandths, which is twice the thickness. And now you can see that that one associated area has 100 thousandths versus the uh, rest of the bottle is at 50 thousandths. So we'll just go ahead and hit apply. <clears throat> now to get the actual threads in. For the thread, what we do, we just simply go to insert and you'll find helical sweep. Now there's protrusions, thin protrusions, cuts, and things like that. If you're going to remove material, it would be a cut. In this case, it's going to be an external, uh, it's going to be a thread, an external thread that we're going to add. So we just go to protrusion. Some of the attributes that appear appear on the right hand side of the screen. 
And the first thing we have to do is to find whether we want it to be variable or constant, or through an axis or normal to a trajectory, or right, a right-handed or a left-handed thread. Uh, you could leave all the defaults on, so constant through axis right hand. Hit done. Then another menu will appear. Now it allows you to set up a new plane if you like. In this case, we'll just use what we have. We'll use the front plane here. And just uh, and then you could um, hit OK. And just hit uh, default. OK. Now it wants us to go ahead and create some geometry. In this case, we need to first draw a center line. So go to center line over here. And right in the center here, click and draw a center line. The next thing you do is you have to define the edge or the profile where the thread is going to be located on the outer edge or silhouette edge of the neck. So what we can do here is we can actually take the line tool and draw where we want it to start and stop and have it intersect a little bit into the actual geometry. So you can see here it's maybe in maybe ten thousandths. Uh, this will make it a little bit easier for the thread to take. And just drag it over to this area here. Okay, and then hit the middle button to apply it. And now you could actually add some dimensions. You could go to the select tool here. And if you want, you could change some of the dimensions. In this case, I want this to be about um, a half inch. And then we'll see down below here if we zoom out a little bit further. We want it, we know that the whole bottle is approximately eight inches high. So in this case, we want it to be uh, just slightly above that. So we'll double click on that eight inch and type in 8.2. And then this one here will make this point three. Actually, um, made a mistake here. That should be 8.1. There we go. So we have a little clearance at the, the top. All right. Now we can just hit uh, Done here. And then it's going to ask us to enter a pitch value. Now, with the pitch value here, uh, we could go, in this case, uh, due to the size constraints we have, uh, let's go with a 0.1375. Okay, and then hit the green check mark over here. And then the section, we get to draw in the section. So, what we'll do is we'll zoom up, take the line tool, and start drawing here, and draw our profile of our thread. And then add some sketched fillets and on the corners. It's best to add the fillets here while you're working on it because later on it cause some uh, it's very difficult to add a fillet or a round to a solid helix versus the profile. It should sweep easily. Okay, and that should about do it. Hit the green check mark. Hit the check mark. And now you can actually hit preview. And in this case, I have apparently I have it going the wrong way. I must have uh, had the the arrow flipped incorrectly. So what what I have to do in that case? is go back and edit my section. And I can actually move it up to the top instead. it 
let's just redo that here. Okay, let's resume this. Basically, now we're going to go ahead and draw the cross section. Uh, the problem I was having earlier with regards to direction was that basically when you draw the line on the sketch earlier, which is actually under the um, sweep profile, uh, it's the, where you start the line is the direction that it's going to choose, uh, or the vector in that direction of that line. So. I'm going to go ahead and sketch now profile up here actually down below here because that's where I started this sketch from and now I could go ahead and hit the green check mark and preview it and there we could see it looks pretty good Now to create what they call a lead-in. A lead-in is basically a um, an adaptive geometry that goes. And in the case, let's say we're going to screw a cap on here. You can see right now this is actually very harsh. It might get caught up on that edge. So you want to make what they call lead-in, which is a transition. And here's a little trick for that. What you do is you start your sketch on that end face, and then. We just have to select some uh, references here. Select the bottom top here. As references. Okay. And now we could actually um, go over here to the right and find use. And we'll select loop and select this edge. Now go ahead and take your centerline tool. I might actually have to do this later, but let's see if this works. We'll go ahead and hit the apply tool. And if we could revolve around that, it's revolving around that axis, that center line that we created. You can see here it's creating geometry, but we don't want it to go a full 360 degrees. So it seems to me that 56 degrees seems to be kind of that sweet spot there. And we can hit preview, and sure enough, it looks pretty good, and it doesn't intersect the bottle. And that's how you create a lead in. We'll do one over here on the other side, too. So again, Go ahead and we start our sketch on that surface. And for your references, you could select the axis as well as some edges here. And then go to Use, Loop, select the face, hit OK, and close. Take a center line and offset it just a bit. And hit the green check mark, revolve, and in this case, let's go 56 again, and pre uh, preview it. The little eyeglasses here, and if it looks good, hit OK with the green check mark. And there is our bottle.